When you're oxidizing fat, you're burning fat. It's just another word that we use to be able to sound smart and to get around the weird YouTube algorithms. Okay, so we have three things to focus on. Fatty acid synthesis, which is creating new fat, which we don't really want, okay? We have lipolysis, which is the mobilization of fat. And then we have oxidation, which is actually using and burning fat at the cellular level. Well, what's wild is that our microbiome and short chain fatty acids, which I'll talk about in a second, regulate this entire process. It is so wild. So we salvage energy from indigestible components. We may think that fiber doesn't really digest, but it does get broken down and ultimately fermented by our gut bacteria. The more gut bacteria we have, the more diverse of a gut microbiome we have, the more efficient we are at breaking those indigestible components down into what are called short chain fatty acids. Now that sounds unbelievably, ridiculously, stupidly boring until you realize that short chain fatty acids drive fatty acid oxidation. They drive fat burning at the cellular level. Okay, remember those three things that I talked about, the, the uh, fatty acid synthesis, the lipolysis, and the oxidation? Well, I want you to think about a balance of those for a second. If we have a lot of synthesis, that means we're creating a lot of fat. Who wants to be creating a lot of fat, okay? And if we have a lot of lipolysis, that means we're mobilizing a lot of fat. But what good is mobilizing fat if we don't actually burn it? We, lipolysis is pointless if we're not oxidizing it. Well, I shouldn't say pointless, but pointless from a body composition perspective if we aren't oxidizing it. So a diverse microbiome affects how much you create in the way of short chain fatty acids. Now, let me just make some sense of this. Basically, short chain fatty acids are like the byproduct of the fermentation of fibers and things like that. I'm gonna go out on a limb and I'm gonna upset a few people by saying this, but if you know someone that eats a ton of veggies and just loves consuming a bunch of fiber, I highly doubt that they're super overweight. I mean, there's exceptions to every rule, but generally people that have a diverse microbiome and have a lot of fiber intake, a lot of veggie intake are relatively lean. Is it because they're consuming magical vegetables that are making them perfect? No, it's because they're microbiome. And there's a lot of different ways to skin a cat when it comes down to that, or should I say skin a cucumber? So when we have a lot of short chain fatty acids, we have a high amount of fatty acid oxidation. But there are also a lot of studies that indicate that when our short chain fatty acid levels are high, we also suppress the creation of new fat, de novo synthesis, right? That's really wild. Now let's dive in a little bit deeper. When you have more of these short chain fatty acids, it increases the fatty acid oxidation in the liver and in the muscle and in the brown fat. But this also drives up something called AMPK. Now I know I'm getting complicated here, but what this means is that when we start this process, we start this phosphorylation that triggers the body to start burning more of its own fat. If we drive up AMPK, the body's energy sensor is now saying, uh-oh, we're low on energy coming in from food, so we need to start pulling energy from fat tissue. And it starts causing this fat burning effect. That, in turn, is why short chain fatty acids from having a diverse microbiome can affect our fat loss potential. But additionally, that same thing, those short chain fatty acids, they decrease the amount of insulin sensitivity in our white adipose tissue. And what that means in human terms is that by consuming way more veggies and by getting a diverse microbiome, we actually slow how much fat we can gain in white adipose tissue bad fat form, okay? It's pretty darn intriguing. When it comes down to diversifying your gut microbiome, obviously consuming the right amount of fibers, consuming soluble fibers, changing up your diet from here and there, being able to diversify is a really good way to go. And probiotics do have an effect too. They're not the end all be all, but they are highly effective if you use good ones. The one that I usually use is down below. I recommend Seed Probiotic, and if you use that link down below, you can save 15%. That's my special link for people that view my channel because Seed is a supporter of this channel. Anyway, we're creating a lot of probiotic content, a lot of microbiome content with them to sort of bring awareness to the microbiome and how important it is with just about everything in our bodies. It's pretty much dictating a lot of this different stuff. Anyhow, I digress. The point is, if you wanna try that probiotic, it's down below. Really cool technology 
technology, it has a capsule inside of a capsule, which you can see in this footage right here, where when you actually consume it, it can survive a little bit more of the hostile gut and get into where it needs to go. So special link down below and thank you Seed for partnering up and making this content possible. So use that link down below for 15% off. So additionally, when these short chain fatty acids get into the bloodstream and they're, you know, this end result of a diverse microbiome, it also drives up something called PGC-1A. Now, PGC-1A is when it gets expressed, it regulates not only our fatty acid utilization, but it also regulates how we handle glucose. So that means these short chain fatty acids are acting as a signaling device. Okay, they're not just a byproduct or a fuel. They go into the body and they send signals to the brain that regulate how we treat glucose and how we treat things. So in essence, they are a modulator of just about every metabolic driver within our body. But one of my favorite things that they do is they increase, of course, the PGC1A, but they also increase the protein expression with uncoupling proteins. So this means that we could potentially burn more fat just as heat. Uncoupling proteins are, uh, I've explained them before, kind of like the radiator heaters, right? Where they take calories and they disperse them as heat. So these uncoupling proteins, when they uncouple, which is what they're called, they create heat. Well, this heat byproduct burns calories with us doing nothing. I could be standing here breaking uncoupling proteins and creating heat burning calories. So short chain fatty acids can trigger this result. Does that mean that if you eat a stock of asparagus and take a probiotic that you're going to run at 200 degrees? No, it just means that you're going to have potentially more of that brown adipose tissue that burns fat at rest. All signs are pointing to lean human beings having a diverse microbiome. But I've got one other cool thing to share, and then I can go into detail in another video about it. Leptin. You've heard of leptin as the cheat meal hormone, perhaps, right? When you have a cheat meal, it signals leptin, and leptin signals the brain to say, hey, hey, there's plenty of calories. This guy just ate a bunch of food. Go ahead and crank up the metabolism to 12, right? So they do, and then, of course, you start burning fat again. Well, short-chain fatty acids are also a big driver of leptin. So here's a hot tip that I want to leave you with, okay? When you're having a cheat meal, if you want to enhance the effect of that cheat meal on your diet, suck it up and have some veggies with your cheat meal. If you're gonna have a mucho grande mega burrito, at least have a side of broccoli along with it. Not because it's giving you the vitamins and minerals, I'm not really worried about that. It's going to drive up those short chain fatty acid content and that's going to drive up those leptin responses that you get, potentially catapulting you out of that fat loss plateau that you're stuck in. Anyhow, as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. Don't forget to check out Seed Probiotic down below in the description. And thank you for supporting this channel and thank you for keeping it locked in. See you tomorrow.